So remember, every small change you make in your diet into the right direction is a good change. And fruit and vegetables are the cornerstones of those changes. They're the powerhouse of health and weight loss. They're nutrient dense, they're low caloric, they're high in fiber, they have a lot of secondary metabolites, antioxidants, vitamins, phenolics. All fruits provide great alternative to manufactured or highly processed snacks. And you should go first and foremost with what your taste buds are. My mission here is to give you options. So today we are talking about three small fruits. In Europe, they're called soft fruit. Some here on social media say they can starve cancer. If you are diagnosed with cancer, you shouldn't rely purely on your diet. Thinking that you can cure your cancer by just eating a bunch of strawberries, for example, that would be not very smart. This is where I do want, want to mention the first of the three fruits. It's a hidden superfood, and I promise most of you don't know it. It's the muscadine grape. So grapes are known for a long time to have health benefits, but muscadine grapes put this on a completely new level. They're absolutely packed with hundreds of phenolic compounds and flavonoids, both are substance classes that are defense mechanisms for plants and known for the disease preventative properties in humans. And um, concentrated extracts of muscadine grapes, in particular, for example, have shown to have anti-cancer effects on triple negative breast cancer, colon cancers, prostate cancers, not just in animal models, but also in humans. In fact, muscadines are so powerful that if you take the muscadine grapes and you concentrate it into an extract, right? containing probably hundreds of different phenolic compounds in like 100, 200x the amount of a normal muscadine grape. That itself could reduce already established cancer in mouse models. This muscadine grape exact, at this point of time in 2025, it is in clinical reviews with real patients as an aid to conventional cancer treatment. Muscadine grapes, they are a specialty that is only grown in the south of the United States. They have, like, they have a thick skin, they have large pits, they come in different sizes. I personally think they're super delicious. If I can have them, I buy them. Typically, you can buy them from August through October in, the grocery, in any grocery stores here in the South. Or you can visit many of those pick-your-own farms that are everywhere. And a lot of people grow them also in their backyards here in the South. The reason for that is because the grape itself is native to the United States, which means it evolved in our climate here. And with all the diseases and pests around, uh, that we still have around here and that is exactly why they have this tremendous amount of phenolics. They had to develop those defense mechanisms that they're using to defend themselves from a lot of the pests and diseases. So muscadines are being used by Native Americans for hundreds of years. But they're also commercially bred for like approximately 200 years. And they were used a lot for winemaking first, but they have gone into the fresh market uh, realm for the last 40, 50 years. And there are now more than 60 muscadine varieties that are currently grown and they come all in all kinds of sizes and shapes and colors. So I personally think muscadine grapes can become the next superfood. Even with the limited amount of research that is done on, on muscadines, we already see like those really breakthrough moments in research and the impact of muscadine grapes on health. So muscadine is an American native, right? We're talking about another American native today and that is our all beloved blueberry. So the interesting thing to know about blueberries is that similar to muscadines, Native Americans were already actively managing wild stands of native blueberries, especially in Eastern North America. So those blueberries, which we can still find today in the woods, similar to muscadines, are what we call low bush blueberry. Today's industry is built on varieties that again have been bred since the early 20th century, so for about like 100 and 120 years, right? And um, they use different types of cultivars. They're having a northern high bush and southern high bush cultivars. They have what we call rabbit eye cultivars. And they still rely still on low bush varieties. And blueberries are grown all over the place. So they're grown a lot in eastern Canada or western Canada, Oregon, Washington, California. At the east coast, you find blueberry, blueberry plantations, right? Like muscadines, blueberries have evolved in America using to the pests and diseases around there. And that fact is the reason why everybody is talking about blueberries. Because blueberries are packed with antioxidants, phenolics, and especially with anthocyanins. And there's a ton of research done on blueberries, a lot more than on muscadines, and specifically on several anthocyanin groups that are uh, found in blueberries, or anthocyanin species, how we call them, right? Without going into the details on this, concentrated blueberry powder, again, very similar to muscadines, 
not just aided in weight loss, but also could reduce type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and had anti-inflammatory properties. And the same is true for anti-cancer effect of concentrated blueberry powder containing concentrated anthocyanins. So that, again, con could control already established types of cancer, several types of cancer, especially colon cancer. The consumption of blueberries themselves is also preventative. The daily intake of blueberry fruit, for example, for an extended amount of time, has shown in this study increased immune response, especially related to natural killer cells. So, and those are the cells that respond to abnormal growth in your body. I personally eat a bowl of blueberries every day. I usually put it into my breakfast. Last one on the list for today, strawberries. Strawberries is an under underestimated superstar in the small fruits world. And I personally work a lot with strawberries, right? So in contrast to the other fruit, which derive directly from North American species, right? Strawberries are what we call a hybrid between a North American strawberry species and a South American strawberry species. White pineberry that some people here on social media think is a completely different fruit. It's a strawberry or red variety that you can buy anywhere. But there are tons of different strawberries cultivars out there and they're packed with phenols, with flavonoids, with ellagic acid, with vitamins. Strawberries have an entire suite of health benefits. They're an enormous healthy food. And just eating fresh strawberries can have disease preventing effect ranging from anti-inflammatory properties to prevention of cardiovascular disease. And again, we're talking a regular long-term consumption of strawberries. Higher concentrated strawberry powders, again, if you take all those metabolites and you concentrate them in the powder and you give them into like, you give them to animal or to humans, uh, have also shown to have anti-cancer properties. And however, there is no doubt that strawberries are one of the most healthiest foods on the planet. And I personally work with strawberries, as I said now, 3,000 times, I think, on the science side a lot. And we do tons of strawberry trials. And um, I eat as many as I can. Great way to do this if you're not a strawberry researcher like I am is to buy frozen small fruits and put them into the freezer and use them in smoothies on all your yogurt or your oatmeal. Just a handful of muscadines, just a handful of blueberries and some strawberries or any other fruit you like, really, right? Uh, can make a massive difference on your health. You will feel that difference, I promise you. And those are the small changes that I'm talking about that you can implement today into your diet and you will be a very different person than you are today. So you're going to see that eating those fruit and vegetables regularly will not just make you feel better, it will also make you healthier. So I hope you learned something. I'm still figuring out how to be a YouTuber. So just forgive me if I blabber a lot. I do that all the time. Uh, you know, you don't want to give a professor a microphone. That's what I always say. If you're really interested in this, read my book. It's going to come out end of this month, end of October. It's going to be ebook. You can sign up. This link is in the description of this video. If you're really interested in how to create a healthy diet, and how to create a diet that you probably can also lose weight on, how to do this step by step without being overwhelmed from the very get-go. That book is for you. Join us or join any other YouTuber that gives you science-backed advice. There are a lot of good people here out on YouTube that provide good science-backed real information. Follow them, follow me, and I see you next time. I am out.